Hello, everybody. We're going to give um, everybody uh, that's trying to sign in a couple more minutes, and then we'll get started at exactly 1230. Um, so if you have any questions as we go, please make sure to um, include them in the chat room. Um, until So let's give it a, two more minutes, and then we'll get going. Tim, I want to check in with you, make sure you're all ready to go. I'm here. Can you hear me? It's good to see your names, everybody. You too. Tim, can you hear me? I sure can. Nancy, I can hear you, although I don't know if you can hear me. My my mic is unmuted, so it sounds like other people can hear me. So, Tim, we cannot hear you, so if you could please unmute your sound, your microphone. Sounds like others can hear me. All right, well, unfortunately, I'm not able to hear you guys, but it sounds like everybody else can. So um, can hear me and can hear Tim, which is most important not to hear me. Um, I just wanted to welcome you all to the instruction committee uh, presenting, providing online feedback. So Tim Henningsen is going to be the lead with Connie Canada uh, Howard, David Ellis, Jill Grauman, and all work together on this, I believe. Um, so. I'm going to try searching to figure out what's wrong with my sound. You guys go ahead and keep going. I am recording it, so hopefully um, all of this will work out in the long run. All right. Um, so I think go ahead and get going. Thank you all. Uh, Nancy, thank you. I hope you can eventually hear me. Um, hello, all. Thank you for coming to this. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Timothy Henningsen, and I chair the college's instruction committee. Um, quite simply, our committee works to address and resolve a variety of issues related to teaching and pedagogy throughout the college. Um, if I can be frank, sometimes that work is exhilarating and sometimes it, that can be much more mundane uh, than that. But these faculty panels actually fit into the category of the former. Um, we've been running these panels uh, since the fall of last year. And our original idea, or the sort of genesis of it, was to create a space by which COD faculty from all uh, areas or distinct areas of the college could come together to address topics that we all um, face in the classroom, things that we all share and experience. Uh, our very first panel, we addressed the topic of alternative grading methods. We had a faculty member from sociology, a faculty member from English, and a faculty member from education, and we talked about um, stuff like contract grading and labor-based grading and even, God forbid, no grading at all. Um, other panel topics have included um, stuff like uh, classroom crises and alternatives to traditional college assignments like exams. And um, we obviously prefer that these panels take place in like a lively face-to-face -face format, um, but given the circumstances, uh, we feel this is still doable in a virtual setting and we do plan to offer many more of them um, this semester. Um, and beyond. Um, so I would encourage you to be on the lookout for announcements from me about these panels, and I would also frankly welcome your ideas for them. Um, it's the faculty at the college that um, 
have these experiences in the classroom and we want to be able to create a space where we can talk, share ideas, experiences, et cetera. So don't be shy if you have a topic that you think is ripe uh, for this sort of format, please feel free to um, read me. Um, Today's panel, as you can see from the document I shared, if you look in the comments section at the very top, you should find a link to a Google Doc, which has a little bit of uh, information about this. Um, we originally sought to do this panel back in March before campus shut down, and we were going to talk about the topic of providing feedback to our students in a classroom setting. Um, but we obviously had to make it a bit of a right turn to that, and we've adjusted this uh, panel to talk about how we provide the same feedback, but in a virtual setting. Um, so I'm running the risk of saying way too much here and taking time away from my colleagues and I want to leave as much uh, room for them to be able to share their experiences. So let me introduce my colleagues and I'll say one more thing. Um, with us today, and I'm, I'm actually like really sort of giddy about this if you can't tell, um, uh, we have uh, Connie Kennedy Howard, a professor of theater at COD. We have David Ellis, a professor of welding, and William Grauman, a professor of English. Um, and we think all three, um, not only on a personal level, but from a sort of discipline specific level, can provide some really fascinating ideas about what work they do in their online classrooms and how they communicate with their students. Um, as with all instruction faculty panels, the way this works is we usually give each faculty member between five and 10 minutes to just sort of share their experiences. Sometimes they bring slides, sometimes they just riff for a little bit. Um, and after which we'll have the Q&A discussion. So if you have thoughts, if you've experienced some of these things in your own right, um, or if you have questions for the panelists themselves, um, we can leave the remainder of the time left over to be able to do that. So. Um, Without further ado, I don't know if we actually figured this out, but I'm going to ask Connie to volunteer to go first. Connie, yeah. Connie, are you okay with that? Sure. I, I'm absolutely okay. I'm sure that my video is showing. I see you in a little square um, in my corner. It works for me. So. Excellent. Okay. So um, I, <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm, uh, and I talked to both Tim and, and Jen about this. I'm not at all sure I should be the person presenting on this um, uh, because I definitely am not an expert virtually. Um, uh, but I do, like all of us, I'm sure, um, provide constant student feedback. So um, uh, in our area in the theater department, I'm chair of the theater department, um, we have one class that we've taught for many years, um, well, not as long as others. Uh, we've taught for about six years, uh, virtually every term, one section of our Theater 1100, which is our theater appreciation class. And, um, uh, and this term, we're now offering two for the first time in a term, because normally that's a class that fills very quickly face-to-face. -face. It's a gen ed class. Um, uh, and so in that class, um, uh, I've used things that I use in that class to adapt to what would normally be face-to-face -face classes. All of our other classes this term and, of course, in the summer um, are VCM. And the way that uh, we're encouraging people in our um, uh, area to do VCM, and this is based upon what happened when we flipped in the spring, is that like many areas, we had some people who, who withdrew. Um, we had less of that in classes that met consistently in the time that would have been face-to-face, -face, consistently, virtually, synchronously. So um, that's what we're encouraging people to do, um, particularly well, in all of our classes, but particularly in acting classes. And we're teaching um, sections of acting one in improvisational acting. Um, we also, uh, so um, going back to what we created for that net class, we did um, discussion rooms. Um, uh, and I know that, that for some people that's a, a nasty um, word, but we actually are in that net class and then in spring when I was doing discussion rooms in that flipped classroom, uh, they were actually very successful. Um, uh, so I don't know if it's the content. I imagine it is, you know, that um, that it's about um, people offering perspectives on um, uh, 
you know, a, 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 a theater's approach to a show or perspectives on a script that we're studying. Um, and but it it really facilitated analyzing the script, analyzing it structurally. Sorry, that's my dog um, uh, barking. Uh, sorry, so sorry. Performing. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want you to hear me yell, so I turned off my mic for a second. Um, uh, so we also used, um, which is speech faculty, and maybe others are using it too. I'd heard about it peripherally, but I'd never used it until spring term, a platform called Go React, where um, if it's something that they can record, like a monologue as opposed to a scene, um, uh, then you can watch it and give comments right time stamped so they can see what it is. We try not to record in live performance um, because then you start playing to the recording um, and so you're not developing naturally. Uh, uh, but in this circumstance, um, uh, we created a full show this summer in our department through Zoom um, called Every Day is Zoom Day um, based upon, um, uh, we had seven actors playing 17 roles and it was created through improv. And so we started the situation by talking about game planning and brainstorming about how people adapted or how their friends adapted or how their family adapted to this environment. And then we um, uh, uh, created a show and those characters based around those circumstances. And it was actually, um, uh, I think, very successful. Um, uh, so, other than um, I, you know, I had, did not set up a Google Voice until yesterday, or maybe it was the day before. Time's kind of um, uh, crunched right now, but um, but and I felt I've I've um, resisted that for several terms, but I really think that there were times when email was not working. Um, uh, Blackboard messaging was not working, so um, uh, so I did set up a Google Voice um, so that my my phone number wasn't out there to everybody. But I have already used it several times. Um, we auditioned again virtually for fall shows. We're doing the Laramie Project ten years later and a Christmas Carol, and they're already in rehearsal. They're custom classes, so I've already um, uh, been texting through Google Voice several times. I don't know, Tim, do I need to say anything else? Should I pass the baton? That's fine. If you, um, I certainly have questions for you, um, but I'm happy to hand it off to uh, David at this point, assuming that uh, our welder is ready. Absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity to get in front of you guys. Um, as king of the ketosthenic learners, going online just ruined my day. You know, in the lab, I've got kids walking up to me, showing me things. We can talk to it. We can touch it. We can handle it. I can point to things. That works. Being online, trying to do this through a screen, not my cup of tea. So a couple of us in the tech building jumped on the ION courses, started slamming through those, trying to figure out what it is we don't know. And even on the onset, the way the online instructors handled things was an eye-opener. We've taken a couple courses so far. One course, I mean, you've got a lot of touches. The person's in. What are you doing? How's it going? Here's a note. You know, they're not calling us at home, but you can tell that they're going throughout their day. They're putting a lot of effort into it. On the other side of the spectrum, we had a person that would give us copious amounts of notes on what we turned in. But when you compare your notes to what someone else got, they're verbatim, right? So it looks like a lot of quantity and touches in there, but it's pretty obviously pretty quick that this person's doing the absolute minimum. So again, trying to get myself pulled together, I've had to move my 1100 series classes into a hybrid format, which I know makes me totally lucky that I still get to touch my people. But I've got 1100 students that aren't the best academic people to engage in college. So I've got to teach them how to be a student and not just any student, an online student. So the last month has been a crush of how do I rework my projects? How do I rework my feedback loops? How do I rework this so that they're engaged? I was lucky enough that our section sizes were drawn down to something much smaller and more manageable. 
The folks that are teaching online with classes of 40, I have absolutely no clue how you're going to be able to handle that. That's insane, right? I mean, if you think about it, if I invest five to 10 minutes per student, figuring out what my feedback is going to be, then communicating it to them, then dealing with it, there's not enough hours in the day, right? So, I mean, I've got to fight the urge to, to, to copy and paste and tell everyone the same six things. You know, I need it to be engaging. I need it to, to grab them. So again, I'm going to try making it as personal as I can. Connie had talked about the Google Voice. I've been playing with that. I like that a lot. There's also some very slick tools in the Blackboard Grading Center. Now, as I go through things, I can look at the students, what they're turning in, and I can talk to the computer. It's recording my feedback. So whether they're on their cell phone, you know, at the park or whatever, they don't have to read what I told them. They can listen to it, right? So take a look at all the new tools that are available in Blackboard Grade Center as far as feedback. You can leave video feedback. You can leave voice feedback. Um, the ION site has a list of different kind of projects and stuff that students can do online. One of the ones I'm trying to do to get them to engage video content is called KWL. What knowledge do they have? What do they want to learn? What did they learn? So before they come to my laboratory, they print off this piece of paper and it says, okay, what do we know about stick welding? They put down five facts. They watch the video. They come up with five questions based on what they saw. When they show up at the laboratory, they bring me that piece of paper, which is their ticket to the lab. I can answer questions during the laboratory. We can go through things. At the end of the laboratory, now we're going to treat this like evidence. If someone was going to accuse you of knowing about stick welding, what evidence could be used to convict you? Right? So, I mean, we're making them touch it. We're making them engage it. You're giving them feedback along the way. I hope some people have questions for me. Again, I don't want to take up too much time but definitely feel like a fish out of water. If you're in that same boat, I feel your pain. David, thank you. That was great. Um, last but certainly not, not least, uh, Dr. Jillian Grauman, are you there? Can you hear me, Jill? Uh, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? I sure can. It's all floor is yours. Okay. All right. Hi, folks. Okay. And everyone can see me, right? Is that right? Yep, you're good. Okay, great. Um, so I actually have uh, some slides that I was going to share with folks. Um, and I did give them uh, to our moderator, so perhaps she can help disperse them uh, after, after we're all done today. Um, I'm not sure if I can figure out on the fly how to pull them up right in front of me. Was messing with that just a little bit. OK. OK. Well, I can certainly just talk through what I was going to say outside of slides. Really, the most important uh, stuff in there, there are some like links that might be helpful for folks if you're interested in learning more about what I've, what I've got to say today. Um, so yeah, I'm Jill Grauman. I'm an assistant professor of English. Um, fair, still fairly new to COD. This is my third year. Um, and for anyone who already assigns writing um, in your class, uh, you know that Responding to student writing is some of the most time intensive, um, laborious work that we can do. And depending on what your practices were like pre-COVID, uh, you might kind of feel like everything just got like 100 times harder with this shift to um, primarily online and remote education. So um, I'm going to really focus on providing online feedback to student writing specifically in, in, in my uh, comments today. Um, but one thing that I do want to acknowledge is that this, um, I don't know, this pandemic time does offer us a pretty cool opportunity um, to kind of rethink the way that we respond um, to student writing to make our writing uh, response more accessible, more tailored to your pedagogical goals. Um, there's really a lot there that, uh, that we can do. Ooh, I see my slides now. This is cool. Fabulous. OK, so that, that's what, what I really see as um, a good thing here. Um, so no matter, kind, of, kind of no matter what. So I'm going to go along to the uh, third item there, the, uh, or the third slide, the agenda. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, some purposes for, for providing student feedback, what students tend to think of feedback they receive, different options for giving feedback, and then just some quick tips. Um, when I, when I wrote my dissertation, it was all about student response. So this is kind of my jam. OK, 
So uh, taken very generally, the purpose of responding to student writing is really to, one, dramatize the presence of a reader. We want students to have an idea of what um, of what someone is thinking when they're actually, um, you know, reading through uh, your, your writing. What, what does a reader actually think? Um, but we also want students to learn from this feedback and apply those lessons to future drafts and assignments. So there's nothing really mind blowing here. But um, the last thing I really want to point out is that the purpose of responding to student writing is really not to seek and destroy all sentence level errors. I think sometimes when we respond to writing, there's this like deep seated urge that you got to get in there and really correct everything. But um, if correcting all errors was an effective approach to um, teaching students grammar, usage, mechanics, punctuation, um, your students wouldn't be making any of those errors in the first place. Um, so consider how sentence level errors factor into your course objectives um, and into your grading criteria for a particular assignment and then um, respond accordingly. Um, if you need to hear this from an English uh, faculty member, let me say this now. Um, you have my permission to just ignore errors um, unless they impede your understanding <clears throat> so that you can focus on things that are more closely connected to the goals of your course and the goals of that particular writing assignment. And particularly for online feedback, if we try to go through and correct every single little thing, it's going to look totally overwhelming to students and they're not going to really be sure what to do with it. So then, um, what do students do with feedback? Well, research indicates that students really don't do a lot with it unless they're obligated to do something. Um, part of the reason for this is that students are uh, efficient with their time and energy. So if there's not a chance to earn additional points later or it's clear to them how reading their feedback or reviewing it in whatever way is going to help them, um, then th they may just skip it altogether. Um, so I'd encourage you to consider doing something with your feedback as part of a course assignment, or um, if you're doing a VCM class, maybe a class day. Um, ask them to look at the feedback, one, to make sure they can access it, and then uh, two, so that you can find out if they are confused about anything that, they, that you had to say to them. Um, and then also, um, another reason students don't do much with feedback is that they aren't sometimes sure like what to actually do with it. I have this quote here from Rich Haswell. He says that students prefer global, non-directive, and positive comments, but they make changes mainly to surface, directive, and negative ones. So they want lots and certain kinds of response, but they have trouble doing much with what they ask for. So know that responding to student writing is really a slow burn approach to improving writing skills over time. Um, the biggest thing that you can have an immediate impact on for students um, is their attitudes toward writing and what they think of themselves as writers. Um, research shows again and again that comments um, that respond to student writing, like it doesn't result in a lot of significant short-term gains in student writing ability, but it has a really big impact on student self-efficacy, their beliefs about how capable they are as writers. So that's what you can really have a big impact on, especially uh, this fall as we're all kind of navigating this new normal. Um, so I've got some different um, options for responding to student writing he here online. I don't think there's anything super mind-blowing here, but just to kind of give you a menu of options, I divided them into these two categories, uh, providing text-based um, feedback and audio-video uh, feedback. Um, the easiest thing to do, I think, is Blackboard annotate. So you create an assignment in Blackboard, and then you can provide feedback right there. You can include marginalia, an end comment. Um, you can put in symbols and that kind of thing. Um, the same thing can happen in um, Adobe Acrobat, um, though there is like a download upload uh, component that'll make things a little bit more complicated. If handwriting is really important to you, like you just miss writing on, um, on papers, um, if you've got a tablet and a stylus, you can use a program like Notability to write handwritten uh, feedback on um, student work. Um, so, you know, something that you can do, assuming that you've got the, the tech to make it happen. Um, the other options, here would be the um, be doing some screen casting or screen recording. So you maybe have the student's paper pulled up in front of you, and then you read it over and kind uh, and respond to the paper um, kind of as you go. Uh, you can do this using Screencast-O-Matic, uh, which is a, a website, or if you have a MacBook. Uh, 
you have a program built in called QuickTime Player where you can record um, your screen for any length of time and then provide a video to students to uh, watch, uh, watch and listen to later. Um, so just a few tips for these different kinds of feedback. Um, if you're um, writing out feedback, I would encourage you to write full sentences uh, because you'd be surprised at how confused students can be um, with just short, uh, you know, a couple word sentence fragments. And they're especially can be confused by abbreviations, even if you provide a key. Um, I once worked with a student at a writing center whose teacher had written AWK in the margin several times. Um, the student did not know one that stood for awkward or two that was a bad thing. She's like, how can I do more of this in my paper? So she was just very confused, <clears throat> even though I'm sure her professor at some point had explained what was going on. So write full sentences, don't use abbreviations, ask questions, include praise, even for student writing that's difficult to praise. Um, and then finally, we probably don't need to tell everyone this, but avoid being mean or harsh. Um, a lot of things can come off as harsh when they're uh, written like this, so try to soften uh, what you can. And then if you're dipping into screencasting, um, try to keep the length fairly brief, like six minutes or less is a, a good time to kind of shoot for. I would encourage you to read through the paper and do some little markup first and then talk it through. Don't try to read the paper for the first time and respond. It'll end up being like a 20 minute recording. Um, and don't worry about re-recording over stutters or other small mistakes. Um, you can give an imperfect uh, video file to your students and they will uh, still still be able to get something from it. Um, so last thing I just want to reiterate is that this really is an opportunity to try to make our pedagogy uh, more accessible, make sure that we're really valuing our course objectives and our feedback, um, and I'd be really happy to talk with you all uh, more about, about any of this. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Jill. Um, I assume the rest of you can still hear me? Yes? All right. Um, so here's how we're, we have a little less than 30 minutes remaining. Um, I'm happy to, to go all the way until 1.20. I'm happy to cut this short, assume, you know, if um, some of the questions are, are, are not there, if they fade a little bit. But um, I don't know what the sharing video, the video or audio uh, settings are here. So I would encourage you, if you do have a question, uh, put them in the comments, maybe address them to one particular member. Um, uh, if, if you have one for Connie, David, or Jill. Uh, otherwise, if you have comments or if you'd like to sort of start a discussion based on some of your own experiences or some of your own tips, I welcome you to uh, post that or turn on your video or your audio and just pipe in here. Um, I, I'd like to start. Um, I'd like to circle all the way back to Connie, if that's okay. Um, Connie, are you there? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. I'm wondering if you can talk, so I, I'm glad that you posted the link to the Every Day is a Zoom Day. For those of you that haven't seen it, it's uh, fantastic. Uh, it's funny. Um, it, it's timely. Um, Connie, I'm wondering if you can speak to uh, what it was like losing the context of the theater when we shut campus down. Um, how that affected you, how that affected your students, because I mean, I am certainly no expert when it comes to um, theater. Um, but I would imagine that there's something there about like knowing the room, um, like being able to sort of see how your fellow actors are responding to a line that you're delivering. So I'm wondering how you're able to provide tips and feedback to your students when they're when they're separated by by distance. How do I make my video bigger? I could, you've suddenly popped up. You you David and Jill oh, are all sharing a okay so. All right, so um, uh, it's just not bigger on mine. I can see you guys, but I can't see me bigger. Um, uh, so um, it was uh, it was tough, you know, um, particularly for classes like directing, um, where they were working on scenes and actually much of the classes about the physical presence in the space. So it was adapting that then to something that they could do virtually. Um, the good part of that is that we'd already had a good portion of lab, so um, uh, then it it was referring back or then using um, video in different ways um, to augment what we would have been doing in actual practice. But in addition to that, 
which I'm sure is true for everybody. There was, uh, uh, in fact, David spoke to it um, uh, a little bit ago, but there was a real loss of uh, community in the physical sense, which is why it became very apparent very quickly that we needed to meet virtually, uh, synchronously. Um, uh, and it was as, as important it was, as it was to content, which it definitely was, it was important to um, emotional well-being. Um, uh, I had two students that spring that got sick too. Um, they were essential workers and um, they got COVID. Neither of them were hospitalized. But, um, and then it became important to the rest of the class, and I think to them too, because they weren't in all the time, they were really sick, but um, uh, to know that they were okay. Um, so uh, it became, it became, you know, and, and it's a, a easy, I'm definitely not a counselor and don't attempt to be, but it, it uh, became a way to develop a deeper connection, I think, than perhaps even would have happened in the classroom. But we had to do things like um, like share screen a lot to talk about blocking and do it in diagram um, since we couldn't do it three dimensionally. Um, uh, and I had a couple directors uh, work um, through Zoom with their actors. Most directors took a different approach, but um, yeah, it was a you know it was a loss, and then um, a. I'm sure everybody felt that I did. David talked to you about, you know, doing crash courses in ION. Um, uh, and thankfully, a couple years ago, I'd, I'd gotten certified through ION in a couple ways, uh, not expecting to use it much. Um, and I did. But, um, and I even did Zoom. I'm sure lots of people did. I did Zoom meetings with our adjuncts and shared screen to, show them where things were in Blackboard. Um, even though there are all of those tutorials, there's something that's very different about um, doing it live with someone. Um, uh, so mm. yeah, it was hard. Yeah, that I think segues pretty nicely to one of the things that David brought up in the comments about um, feedback provided in a live sort of synchronous setting as opposed to more private asynchronous. And David, I don't know if you have any sort of initial thoughts about that because it is real. I, I think we all face that like when you're in a virtual setting building that community that just naturally exists in a classroom is really challenging but how do you then how do you work with your students to be able to sort of do that you know and like I can going back to the every day as a zoom day I think that's a fantastic example of something that was built designed delivered in this virtual setting um, and so having those Zoom meetings and being able to provide feedback and stop a student and say, hey, wait a second. But David, I'm wondering if you can sort of pipe in and. No, that, you're hitting right on the head. I mean, as a Boy Scout, stuff like that, they always taught you want to counsel in private, you want to praise in public. You know, but to give good constructive feedback, you kind of need a mixture of both. You know, yeah. if you're going through or discussing something, you know, I like the courses where everyone starts to work together. You get that community feeling. It's not just the sage on the stage, I'm gonna say, read the PowerPoint slide to you. It's better when the student says, well, what about this? And another one said, okay, if you overhear it, it says this, that, and the other thing. And they start having that conversation. That's a powerful moment. But you gotta be able to temper them because they can't turn on one another. You know, they, you can't shoot down another kid. You know, so again, that ion stuff was nice because, you know, here's how we're gonna comment on each other's work. You know, if you say, you know, something, make sure there's a positive thing, a negative thing, or, you know, a constructive thing. You know, and again, working with that 1100 student that's fresh out of high school, you know, I don't know what their exposure was to the online classroom the previous semester, but just pre-COVID, it was rough making that transition, you know, that you're expected to be here, expected to be read ahead of time. So I think one of the important things I'm going to try to set them up for success with is, is upgrade my uh, rubrics so there's better explanations of what's expected. And I've also put a lot more effort into timing out the course. 
this is due then. Here's the pre-work for this. Before we meet, you need to have read, done this, done this. Now we meet. Now we do this. I mean, a lot more prescriptive in, in my thoughts. But again, I am wide open. If someone has this figured out, I'd be happy to, to hear what you have. Thanks. Well, I would also say, can I jump in, Tim? I would yeah. also say that for me, and again, it's probably somewhat driven by discipline, but I think it is always valuable to acknowledge that this is a, um, a live interaction situation. Um, so we're all learning, and particularly now. Um, uh, like I would often get questions as we were putting together the show. We do improv every summer, although in a completely different way. Um, uh, and somebody would say, how are we doing this? And I went, I don't know. We're figuring this out as we go. And, um, uh, but I will say, um, I am, I feel like I'm, I'm even more, um, physically and mentally, uh, uh, in tune, like uh, it's, a, it's even more exhausting virtually than it is face to face. Um, after a three hour rehearsal, I'd be like, Bleh. so, um, uh, I just think it, it's important to acknowledge that and, you know, make sure you always have water and make sure you take those breaks and, um, uh, uh, because it, you're, um, I don't mean on in the sense of acting. I don't mean that. I mean, you're, you are in that little square on their screen. So they're very tied into everything that you do, um, uh, much more than when you are face to face. Hmm. You know, I like the comment that uh, Corey just left. Um, about like small groups, and that actually kind of leads into the, one of the next questions I wanted to ask, because David made a reference to the idea, and I think a lot of our both faculty and students are sort of guilty of expecting the sage on the stage in a virtual setting, where the professor's there, they're going to tell you what to do, how to do it, and then end of story. And so um, maybe even Jill can take this up a little bit, like in a writing class. I mean, that's my experience like Jill. Um, I rely so heavily in a face-to-face -face class on students working together and like looking at each other's writing. I mean, writing is ultimately mimicry, if you ask me. Um, but like so students being able to see like what their peers do well, what sort of maybe mistakes or habits they fall into. And so I'm wondering like how in a in a virtual setting when we're spread out all over Chicagoland and potentially beyond, how do you how do you bring students in to this um, opportunity to provide feedback to each other as opposed to just us? Jill, I don't know if you have any ideas, but. Uh, yeah, um, one thing that I didn't uh, really touch on at all, but I think is really important, especially if you're uh, assigning things like uh, major or papers or that kind of thing is uh, allowing peer review uh, to happen. Um, and then, so in the past when I've done peer review in a face-to-face -face kind of class, you know, we all come on the day and we've got a draft to share and we share it with the other students and there's small group conversations. Um, but what I'm planning on doing this fall is um, having peer review take place um, at least starting during the VCM section that I'll, I'll be teaching, um, but having it take place via Google Docs, so having students upload their draft there, and then having the students work together to provide feedback. Um, mm -hmm. I think <clears throat> uh, during non-pandemic times, you know, they would have a chance to like kind of discuss a little bit before and after, but I think here being able to have the chance to see what each person in their group had to say, um, can be especially beneficial, just build in a little bit more of that conversation that we're not able to have in the same kinds of ways. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, are there any questions from those of you in attendance here? I don't know if I've missed any in the comments or you can feel free to, to type them in frantically now. We're nearing our, our, our deadline, but we're, we still have plenty of uh, all right, Donna writes, what about students copying other students' work if they see something that's valuable? Um, I would say that's not always a bad thing. If we're talking about like a word for word, like, oh, this is, I don't know, exactly what I need to say in my paper, then uh, 
that's obviously problematic because that would be plagiarized. But if it's something like, I think the way this person, you know, transitioned to this new idea, I think the source this person used was really good. I like the way that they uh, worded this kind of idea, like appreciating those sorts of things and seeing how they can apply it in their own writing is actually really valuable because that's what, I mean, when we do professional kinds of writing, we look at models of what other people do. We consider how that fits into our own rhetorical situation and we go from there. I can say that in how, my experience with doing peer review, I've yet to run into a student just straight up copying other people's work because we can we can all see it. It's, uh, we can all see it together. So it would be hard to get away with that kind of like um, intellectual theft. I also think in our area, and you know, I'm in a different area, but um, uh, there's something to be light bulbs for people working in my discipline almost always go on when you're watching somebody else work as opposed to when you're doing your own work because you're you're focused so much on yourself that you have no idea how that's presenting right so um so plagiarism is a different thing of course um uh but um you know when we're working on scripted material that's that's, uh, uh, I mean, we're, we're bound to use those words as written. In fact, you're fined professionally if you don't. So it's about um, uh, finding the, the way your strengths and then finding the way to um, uh, build those at the same time bring, bringing along things that may not be strengths. And um, if that means that you're borrowing in the short term somebody's approach, that's actually a healthy thing most of the time, as long as we're not talking about plagiarism in our area. Well, and just uh, one more thing I'll, I'll add to this is um, another affordance of uh, submitting writing online through Blackboard uh, is it really creates a paper a digital trail of where everything is. It's really hard to lose that draft. Um, it's really hard to, you know, just lose track of things the way it is with, with paper. So. I mean, if you are concerned about plagiarism, having things submitted um, via Blackboard is really a slick way of helping to avoid it. Yeah. David, how kinda, do you, go ahead, go ahead. I kind of like the group work idea because again, my kind of work, rarely are you alone. You play to each other's strengths. You know, someone remembers something, does, does something that keys, that helps each other out. So again, I know it's different for each of us, but I'd like to encourage that kind of stuff with my crew. Tim, you were going to ask me something? Sort of in line with that. I was just going to say, like, how do you encourage your students to teach each other in your discipline? So, so in, in Blackboard, the collaborate, when you set it up in your Blackboard, it gives them their own space. So six of them could get together and say, we're going to meet Friday morning at 3 a.m. And they could all get together and have their own that the, the instructor doesn't have to host. So, again, I try to point that stuff out to them. In some of the early testing and stuff like that, again, we're going through doing things. Back in the traditional classroom, I'd read the test to them and say, who knows the answer? What do you got? What do you think? To so again, get that kind of going back and forth, the ping pong ball, you know, who, who's contributing, who's not. Well, then I've got three people that didn't say anything the whole time. Well, now I know those are the people I got to spend more time to draw out. You know, so it, it, it serves it on a lot of purposes. The other thing I like doing is identifying the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and veterans in the crew. Because, again, they've got some exposure to some leadership. You can kind of pull them out early on to set kind of the tone on how a leader should work with them. But don't let them run the whole show. I mean, grab the quiet kid, put them in charge of a project. All right, next Tuesday you're going to set this up. You've got so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so to help you out, figure this thing out. You know, it's funny here we are talking about when I – this is a blind spot that I'm admitting to, but when we first sort of discussed this topic in, uh, in instruction, you know, the idea was how do faculty work with students to be able to provide feedback? But here we are talking about students providing feedback to each other, and I think that's an essential element that, uh, that I sort of neglected in drawing this up, that we need to find ways, and maybe that's the answer, is to, you know, like David said, we cannot spend, we can't dedicate 10 to 15 minutes per student per assignment in a 35 student section. We need to find ways to be able to get students helping each other, giving them feedback. And that's sort of a, a much more nuanced version of this, which I, we had originally planned. So you put 40 brilliant people in a chat room, good things are going to happen. Yeah. Yep. 
Um, have I missed any questions? I'm trying to moderate as best I can, but um, Lisa Higgins writes here. I'm just going to read this. Um, I don't know if Lisa can turn on her camera or mic, but Lisa, I'll, I'll take care of it now. Um, put students in groups, and each group gets a slide in Google Slides. Then when you return, you can all see the group's responses. Um, it's a way to have groups share their work with the group. Um, I've actually done this rather successfully, where it sort of serves as more, more of a, a more fun discussion board, is giving each student like a slide, and they can add visual elements, work together, comment, et cetera. Um, I personally am a big proponent of Google. It works really well in English classrooms for collaborative purposes, and so I don't know what other people might say. But um, any other questions, comments for our panelists? Going once, going twice. All right, look at that. Like this morning's sessions, we are ending a little bit early. This should We should all uh, cheer for that. So um, look, I want to say thank you to all of you for being here, but I especially want to thank Connie and David and Jill for volunteering to do this. I don't know if you volunteered or if I pressured you and harassed you via email going back all the way to, to March. But um, I really appreciated this. I think it was a great discussion. And this is one of the things I value about these faculty panels of, you know, to have someone from theater and welding and English. You know, those are three different corners of the college, and yet we all share that that middle ground. And so we we hope to do much more of this. Um, and so before I let all of you go, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, if you want access to Jill's slides, I'll have access to them. If you want to um, talk to Connie more, I can put you in touch with her. Maybe you have questions about Go React or her um, the Zoom play that they put together, which you should all click and bookmark if you can't watch it now. Um, otherwise, please feel free to reach out to me. If you have ideas for topics that would uh, be suitable for this sort of format, let me know because we want to be able to sort of preserve these um, this space and these conversations so we can continue to collaborate together. Um, so, all good? Okay. Yeah. Thank you all. Everyone, be well.